praise the name of the Lord for that rendition. We pray that the miracle of God will never cease in the life of all our mistress, all our choir, in the name of Jesus. Shall we just uh, pray? Holy, 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 holy is the Lord, hallelujah, holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Perfect, 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 perfect is the Lord. Hallelujah, perfect, 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 perfect is the Lord. Holy faithful and perfect God, we bow our head, we bow our heart before you. We want to thank you and worship your name for whom you are. Lord Almighty, thank you for your word that is unfailing. Thank you for your glory that is always there. Thank you because you are the only one that has the continuity of life. Because you don't have beginning, and you will have, I mean, you will have no ending. So you are just one and package in one solid, solid person. We say thank you. What a good God. What a mighty God. And we say to you, glory be to your name. In the name of Jesus. Father, we have come today, even to the table of God, for a digging deep. We ask that you yourself, you will take us deeper. You will dig us, you will take us, I mean, you will dig deep for us that we will know the counsel of God. This perilous time we are in, please teach us how to really navigate in perfection, in holiness, and be faithful to you. I pray, committing all my faculty and the people who are watching and listening to you that will not do violent to your word, but your word will bring peace, joy. In area there is a rebuke. Your word also will do it with love. We thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, this is your business. Take over and get the glory. Let there be salvation. Let there be restoration. And let there be restitution. To you be glory, honor, and praise. Thank you for hearing our prayers. For all the people who need the touch of God, touch them today. And let there be revival in their spirit, souls, and body. Let there be healing. And let there be peace in their home. Thank you for hearing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. We want to bless the name of the Lord once again for the privilege that we have from our Father in the Lord to come and do what we are doing here. Daddy, we want to appreciate you, sir. And we pray that the Lord of heaven will continue to bless your life. From glory to glory, God will take you and our mommy too, in Jesus' name. Today, because we've received many letters on uh, saying something about perilous time, sometimes we did a study, but not really as we will uh, go into it today. So we'll be talking about the perilous time. Perilous time. And I want to read from 2 Timothy 
chapter 3, 1 to 10. But 1 to 15 will be the ideal passage to read. But I'm going to stop at 10. 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 15. But I will read up to 1, up, I will read up to 10. This know also that in the last day, perilous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, convertious, boaster, proud, blasphemer, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural aff aff affection, truth breaker, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good, traitor, heady, high-minded, lover of pleasure, more than the lover of God, having a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which crept into houses and leave captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lost. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janice and Jambres withstood Moses, so do this resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manners of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. The greatest threats to the kingdom of God and the church of Christ today is the kind of compromising and worldly Christian the devil is generating to destroy the faith that is once delivered to us and it was delivered to all saints. The importance of prophecy and warning against perilous time cannot be overemphasized because we are living in the fulfillment of perilous times. So the purpose of this digging deep is to further show us what we need to move away from and now we can further our commitment to holiness and Bible Christianity. It is either we stand out or we go down with perilous time. But my prayer is that none of us will go down with perilous time in the name of Jesus. Amen. We must fight for our soul. We must fight for the souls of others. And we must be able to stand out like Daniel, who determined in Daniel 1, 8, Daniel 1, 8, not to defile himself with the meal of the king. We must be able to do like three Hebrews, who said we are not going to bow down for the idol of the king. We must do like Daniel, Who's, they told him, they rolled out a decree not to pray, and he said, no, I cannot but pray. So we're going to break the study into four different uh, segments. Caution against the perilous time. Caution. And character of the perilous time. Then I'm, we're going to talk about the, about the cure for perilous time and the charge about perilous time. They are all represented with C. Caution, character, cure, and charge. Now, number one, caution against the perilous time is in verse one. That particular text we read, 2 Timothy 3, 1. He said, know this also, that in the last day, perilous time shall come. The word perilous means very dangerous. We are living in a very dangerous time. Full of risk. Very risky time. Hazardous. Harmful, dreadful, threatening to be avoided. So the last day began at Pentecost and will continue until the second coming of Jesus. The last day will be characterized by number one, I'm going to mention about seven things there. Acceleration of uh, intensification of evil in the world. Acceleration or an intensification of evil in the world. In 2 Peter 3.3, 3, 2 Peter 3, 3, the Bible said, Knowing this first, this coffer will come in the last day, walking according to their own lust. In 1 John 2.18, 1 John 2.18, 
The apostle of love said, little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard what the Antichrist, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. Number two, a widespread of collapse of moral structure of the family and the society in general. I'm talking about what characterized the last day. Widespread, or by me, a widespread collapse of moral structure of the family and of the society in general. People are not respecting marriage again. It doesn't really matter. They want to commit and quit the next day. I mean, it's unthinkable. In our, I mean, when I started as, as a Christian, I, I've never, I don't know what they call cohabit, but now it's been practiced. I, I, it's, it's, uh, it's just the spirit of the last day. Number three, a grievous and trying time for God's true servants and believers. Try time. Jesus, when he was talking to his disciples, he said, if not, if the days were not shortened, or they didn't cut the day short, even the believer will be, will be deceived. Because many, many love, many love, the love of many will wax cold. Number four, hypocritical lives and false doctrines and false religion. Hypocritical lives and false, do, false, do, I mean, false doctrines and false religion. All kind of things. The social media has helped us to see some of the very, 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 very uncomely, ungodly, very something that is dirty going on in the name of Christianity. Lot a lot and lot of it is there. And number five, a mighty end time outpouring of the Holy Spirit in and through the church that has passion for Jesus. Reviver. I mean, powerful reviver for those particular church that has passion for evangelism. Number six, a release of greater grace and power for believers and churches who hold fast to the original faith. A release of greater grace. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, 33, Acts 4, 33, from New King James Version, and with great power the apostle gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. In Romans chapter 5, verse 20, Romans 5, 20, moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but we are seen abound, grace abounded much more. And number seven, one of the things that characterize the end time, end time, or this perilous time, is that the love of many will wax cold. Many, it just oh, it's okay. We serve God in our spirit. But I pray today, the spirit of the last day will never find expression in you in the name of Jesus. Now, number two segment, number two segment, the characters of perilous time. Characters of perilous time. We can find that in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 to 4. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 to 4. Now, it is the conduct of the people that will create the peri perilous time. Now, when we are talking about the character, we are talking about the conduct of the people that will create the perilous time. Now, and there are, according to where we read to us, there are nine things that the Bible mentioned. I will mention them because, because it's already there. Number one, lover of their own self. That's in verse two. Lovers of their own self. Selfish and self-centered is the rule of all destructive behavior. Me and me and myself and I in me alone. Number two, convertious. Having loss of the eyes, craziness for wealth and materialism. That's two. People are getting 
and getting and getting and getting today, they never satisfy. <laughs> they said in 1976, um, they conduct um, um, a research about contentment. And as at that time, they said an average person, not everybody, because from the generality, there is always an except, exception, that an average person has about 900 needs. Now, they repeated that after 10 years. They said the same average person needs about 9,000 things. The one they did re recently, maybe two years ago, they said in an average person in life, in the generation we live, need about 30,000 different things to get satisfied. We are in the next generation of getting, getting, getting. And they get... They never satisfy. Convectiousness. Convectiousness. Number three, boaster. Proud, high-minded. Boasters. Proud, high-minded. Self-praise. An advertisement due to possession and position and power. Ah, we are the one. No one else. <laughs> Number four, disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. Disrespect and disorderly and disorderly. They, they dishonor godly parents, both physical and spiritual. Disrespect, dishonoring godly parents. They disrespect their parents, their physical parents. That's all these ones are located in verse 2 of that Second Timothy chapter 3. Number 5, unthankful and unholy. Unthankful and unholy. Not appreciating God in their life, praising him to please him. There's nothing we have that is not given to us by God. We should give him all the glory, give him all the praise. Number six, without natural affection, truth breakers, traitors, no family of affection and lack of tender love. How can a father leave home and abandon two or three children with the wife? How can the wife just walk away and be doing her own thing in the name of not being satisfied by the husband? Because no natural affection and treacherous and betraying true friendship. That's in verse 3. That people who betray true friendship, you can't you can rely on them. When they tell you I'm coming, they are going. When they tell you I see you 1 o'clock, had another day. That's where you will see them. And number seven, false accusers, blasphemers, despise, I mean, they said despiser, that's what the Bible called them. All form of lies, evil speaking, character assassination against true believers and godliness. Some people twist words, twist word. They, that one is found in the same chapter, verse 3. And number 8, lovers of pleasure than God. Lovers of, lovers of pleasures than God. All form of immorality and ungodly, ungodliness that satisfy the flesh. You see that one in verse 4. First Timothy, I mean, Second Timothy 3, verse 4. All form of immorality. And it's very, very terrible in our generation. Sometimes, when you are going on the street, you have to close your eyes on the big board they use for advertisement. I mean, they use sex to advertise almost everything. The telephone company are not exempted. The all kind of company, thank God for Christianity. I, I, I pray today, everything that pollutes will never find expression in your heart in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Number nine, having a form of godliness without power. Being religious, they are very religious, but not victorious above sin. Come to church, but they are they never free. They are never, never set free from sin. They have outward look of uh, godly godliness. They have outward, I mean, they have outward look of somebody is holy, but inside they are rotting, rotting as anything. But inward, they are rotting in unrighteousness. Verse 5. 
That's uh, Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. So, what are we really saying? So many things, so many characters are in that perilous, perilous times. I pray that you will not be part of the people we mentioned. And if you are there, there is hope. The blood of Jesus is there to cleanse. Now, number three is the cure for perilous time. The cure for perilous time. And we can find that in verses 5 to 9. Verses 5 to 9. What are the cure for perilous time? Number one, we must receive the prophecy and the warning to be conscious of it at all times. Let the warning of the Bible guide your step, guide your conduct, guide your thought, guide your action. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible said, This know also that in the last day, perilous times shall come. That's the warning to be careful, to be watchful. Number two, kill. We must separate ourselves from the company and fellowship of Christian with shady character, boaster, lover of self, all the nine characters with that verses um, two, three, and five mentioned in that particular passage. In 2 Corinthians 6.17, 2 Corinthians 6.17, he said, wherefore, Come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. God is warning you and me to come out. Number three, kill. We must avoid carnal Christianity and false doctrine. Avoid carnal Christianity and false doctrine. They show me a picture on my WhatsApp the other day. Somebody was bathing in himself in the bar, in the in the drop, digging himself. I was having the water to the people, and I said, "Come on, when does Christianity become all this?" Somebody on the stage, lying on the woman, and said, "That's what uh, uh, the spirit said he should do." Only God know what kind of spirit. Openly in the church. <laughs> now look at what the Bible said. Is in 2 Peter 2 1. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. He said, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, that is secretly, that is with style and evil method, shall bring in damnable heresies. Even deny the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. We must avoid carnal Christianity and false doctrine. People can no longer take real doctrine. Well, last, have we talked about restitution? Maybe one of, one of the, you have my father in the Lord talking about restitution quite a lot. And you still have something you stole in your home. It's an accosting, like the thing that end the life of Achan. Return it. Number four, end time believers and minister must distinct themselves from false teachers. From false teachers. First Timothy 3. 3 to 5. First, so first Timothy 6, 3 to 5. And Titus chapter 3, 10 to 11. Titus 3, 10 to 11. He's talking about moving away from false teacher. Don't even give them a hand of fellowship because you need just a, a drop of a poison on a bowl of a delicious meal. The whole thing will be condemned. Number 5. We must stand firm in the apostolic doctrine. Stand firm in the apostolic faith once delivered to the saints. Jude chapter 3 said you should stand firm in the faith that was once delivered 
to you. That's the way, standing on the rock, standing on the promises, standing on the rock of ages. Number six, we must be watchful and be prayerful to guide against deception and temptation to sin. We must be watchful and be prayerful to guide against deception and temptation to sin. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye stand fast in faith. Quit you like men and be strong. 2 Timothy 4, 5 also said the same thing. 2 Timothy 4, 5. And I'll paraphrase it. He said, but watch thou in all things. We need to watch. I need to watch. Brother, sister, you need to watch. And I pray that the spirit and the grace to be watchful, the almighty God will deliver to you and me today in the name of Jesus. And number seven, we must release ourselves to the Holy Spirit and be sensitive to his leading. The spirit of the truth, the master said, the great teacher said in his textbook called the Bible, the great teacher is, the, is Jesus. According to John, the truth and life, John chapter 14 verse 6, in his book, the scripture, the Bible, searching the scripture, they talk about me. Now, he said, the great teacher said in his textbook that the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Let us be sensitive to him. What is he saying? And I pray that the water and the ocean and the flood, the storm of perilous time will never take you away from the bosom of, of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And now what are the charge about perilous time? The charge about perilous time. Now read on your own verses 10 to 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 10 to 15. Now, the charge of Paul to Timothy and believer is to live the kingdom lifestyle just as Noah. Noah did in his perilous day. Jesus said in Matthew 24, 37. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so also the coming of the son be. As the day, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Remember, Noah represents the church. Noah represents the church. Genesis 6, 8. Genesis 6, 8 said, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The reason Noah found grace is because he lived a kingdom lifestyle. And everyone who will survive this perilous time, you need to live a kingdom lifestyle life. Now, and there are five things about Noah that, pro, that portray his kingdom living. Five is the number of grace. You know that? And so, number one, charge that we pick from Noah and I, I met that Paul was talking about Noah was a just man. Just is righteous. You are charged to do the same. Righteous, moral, right or justifiable, virtual. I mean, you follow moral and religious law. You have to be upright, acting right. You want to find grace in the eyes of the Lord. You must live the kingdom life. I must be just. Regardless of what the rest of the world, rest of the society may be doing. You have to hold the banner of holiness. You must call right thing right. Wrong thing wrong. That's number one. Noah was a just man. The charge of Paul to Timothy and to me and you. You must be just. Number two, 
Noah was a perfect, I mean, Noah was perfect in his generation. Of our people, it's not, it's not possible to live a holy life. It's not possible to live right. Then what you are saying that it's not possible for you to go to heaven. And I want to make heaven. And without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Now, any unclean thing will never enter the kingdom. Noah was perfect in his generation. He was without spots or blemish. He has true, I mean, he had failure. That's true. But he was solid as far as God was concerned. He was above reproach. You want to live the kingdom life in this perilous time? Your character must be solid. Everyone that wants to live perfect in this generation, you must have accounting officer, accountability officer as it were. You must be accountable to someone. This is where I fought people who don't want to stay under authority. Somebody said, yeah, you are too afraid of you are too afraid of your leader. What else do you want me to do? You want me to, to take a holy boldness and confront the people God has appointed? No! You should read the Bible. <laughs> so, you must be perfect in your generation. Number three, Noah listened to God. He listened. Everyone that will survive, everyone that will conquer, Everyone that will be an overcomer. In this very lost time, you must listen to God. He that have here, <laughs> the word said, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Listen to God. It's like listening to, I mean, <laughs> listen to God is like listening to anyone. Before you can hear him, he need to be ready I mean, you need to be ready to keep quiet. If you are the one talking, blah, 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 you can't listen. Just as in a conversation, you cannot hear others when you are talking. You need to be quiet and hear God. So it is with God. If you want to hear him speak, you must be quiet. And you must be focused on what he's saying. Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. Talk about the word of God. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, verse 1, he said, if you hearken diligently unto the voice, you need to listen to God, listen to what he said, listen to correction. And number four, Noah was obedient. Noah was obedient. You and I must, obe must be obedient. We are living in a world that people just want to do what they want to do. He did what God told him to do. In spite of what the world taught, they will call you stupid, foolish, unwise. I will call you all kind of name. The word obedience is defined as compliance to the plan. Conformity to the pattern. Observance to the rules. Adherence to the standard and submission to another will. Obedience is the bottom line in Christian life. Obey those who have rule over you. Obey the love, law of God. The book of Isaiah, I normally want us to read verse 18 before 19. Isaiah 1, 18 and 19. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the Lamb. You need obedient. Living in the world, everybody wants to play the boss, the head. Nobody wants to take things. But anyone who wants to overcome the charge is that you need to be obedient. And number five, which is the last one, Noah had faith. Noah has faith. He had faith. Faith in God. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, Hebrews 11, 7, it says, By faith, Noah be warned of God, of things not seen, as yet move with fear, prepare an act to the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world and became hearers of righteousness, which is by faith. And remember, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Hebrews 11 says, But without faith, it is impossible to to please him. 
For he that cometh unto God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There are three things in Noah's faith. Three things in Noah's faith. And three is the number of fullness. The past, the present, and the future. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> dead, burial, and resurrection. And there are three deaths. Now, three dead at Calvary. Dead in sin, dead to sin, and dead for sin. Three, three, three. Perfect. So, three things about Noah. Noah, number one, base his faith upon the word of God. The faith of Noah was based upon the word of God. He was divinely warned. So, all the warning you will ever need in life is in the Bible. Whether you have your Bible on the system on your hand, or you have it on paper, it's there. It's there. Number two, Noah's faith was involved in things not seen. In things not yet seen. Noah had never seen a worldwide judgment, but he believed. He believed. He has not seen it, but he believed. Number three, Noah, Noah's faith is that, let me, let me pick it up again. Noah's faith is that it moved him to action. He had faith. The faith is based on the word of God. And it was one of things not yet. And that pushed him to action. It was not a passive faith. It was an actual faith. He moved with action. So, Noah's faith was based on the word of God. It was divinely one. Noah's faith was involved in the thing not yet seen. Noah has never seen a worldwide judgment. Noah's faith is that, is, Noah's faith was the one that was moved, that moved into action. Now, Paul charged to Timothy as a believer and a minister is to examine his own life carefully and follow example of good doctrines, manners of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, or love, patience, persecution, and affliction. May I say this? Every believer, workers, and Christian disciple must continue steadfast in what they have learned. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 to 15. Second Timothy 3, 14 to 15. And like Timothy, we are surrounded by false teachings, but we must not allow the society to, to distort or crowd God's eternal truth in us. An example of a man that has a parrot. This man has a parrot that goes everywhere with him. And so the man on Saturday went with his parrot to the club. And so the parrot, you know, parrot can talk. They got there, the parrot didn't say anything. They got home, he didn't say anything. Now the owner of the parrot told him, told the parrot when they got home, you didn't say anything. Say, when I go to church tomorrow, we, I, will, I will have what to say. And they went to church on Sunday. The parrot saw the, uh, the people, the exact people he saw in the clubhouse yesterday night in the church. So he didn't talk. So the owner of the parrot got to him and said, he didn't talk. He said, I don't have comment. But now that you ask me to talk, I suppose there should be a difference between people who go to club and people who are found in church. But because I found the same people who are hailing the devil in the clubhouse, and I found them using the same mouth to pray, to, to say something to God. There should be different. No wonder Second, second Corinthians 5, 7, says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Let me conclude. This is a perilous time. Every believer that wants to get to heaven must heed the warning. Careful to live a separate life from the world and false brethren in order to please God. I don't know about you, but I will have determined to live the kingdom lifestyle. This perilous time, after it's over, I want to have testimony that I have found grace in the sight of the Lord so that I can say like Paul, I have fought a good 
fought, fight. And now I am over there with my father. I want to hear from God. And I want to hear him saying to me, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And to escape that, you need to be born again. And if you are born again, you need to focus on what we are said today. Let's bow our head and say, God, I need your help. I need your anointing. I need your grace. I can't do it by myself, but he, he can do it for you. Shall we just pray? And if you want to give your life to Christ, I just want you to pray wherever you are. I'm going to pray with you now. Eternal Father, I strengthen my heart force and I lift my hand up that everyone making confession about sins, their sins today, deliver them, save them, and, and bring them to the kingdom. For all those who are born again and they are, they are, they are, they are, they are tracing back their step back to God, some of them are confessing their sin. Some of them will be caught in the perilous time. I pray that this day you will restore them. The spirit of restoration will come into their life. All of us who are standing, give us grace to be able to make it. And when the road come up in heaven, may we be able to hear the trumpet sound. This perilous time will not swallow us, swallow our Christianity, but we'll make it over there. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we want to pray on your offering because your service is not complete until offering is given. Please, you know what to do. See all the things display on your, on your system and please do give offering to God because you need a future. Father in heaven, we declare that you don't have a need but we are the one who need to sow seed to be able to reap an harvest. Everyone holding something in their hand, please, Jehovah God, bless them, receive the offering, and return it to them multiple fold. And in the kingdom of the righteous, don't let any of them, any of us be found missing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you drop it. God bless you, sir. <laughs>